I want people to be able to be who they are and do what they love without fear for simply living. The stories that I tell and the art that I create are a reflection of that. These particular photos and their captions, they allow us to connect and feel with the subjects in the picture on a level that is deep enough to pull at and challenge both our hearts and our minds. Thanks to organizations like the J. Paul Getty Museum, Getty Unshuttered, the Center for Sustainable Journalism at Kennesaw State University, Boca Focus, Fox ATL, and YouthSpark, system-involved Atlanta teens were given the chance to express their story in pursuit of justice through photography and conversations. Seven sessions and a smartphone camera over Zoom in the middle of a pandemic gave these teens a platform to learn about photography, discuss the justice and injustice they alone could see in the world, and use the photos they took to change how the world could see them. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening for our spring photography exhibit in Pursuit of Justice, which celebrates the work and creative expression of this group of young people who have personal experiences with the juvenile justice system. We're grateful to the J. Paul Getty Museum for its support of this work and our Atlanta-based partners, Fox ATL and YouthSpark, who work closely with the program participants to help them reflect, educate, and inspire through their photography. Too many events of the last year have given us reason to pause and think critically about how our systems and institutions engage our communities. We celebrate the work of these young photographers and embrace their courage and view into a changing world. Their work is critical for our collective reflection and necessary for us to remember where we've been and where we need to go. The Center for Sustainable Journalism at Kennesaw State University was founded over a decade ago to discover innovative ways to produce financially sustainable and ethically sound journalism. Boca Focus is our photography platform and where we showcase the work of emerging photographers from around the world. So my name is Brittany Prieto and I'm the Education Specialist for Youth Development or Teen Programs at the Getty. Our Unshuttered Photography Program was designed to inspire creativity and promote social good and it has taken different forms and platforms over the years. There have been on-site programs, teacher resource sites and lessons, a mainstay has been our photo sharing app and in the past year, partnerships that have brought the program across the nation. While we started our partnership with Boca Focus with the exhibition of New World Isolation back in the fall, this work has in fact linked together so many of us. This whole program was a strategic partnership. And as a nonprofit organization, it's always been Vox's intention and strategy to uh, partner with other youth serving organizations um, to make magic happen, to serve more young people than we may have served otherwise, to bring an outlet to young people whose programming may be doing incredible work, but doesn't have a media outlet or um, a microphone or a, another mechanism to amplify those voices. One of the values embedded in our organization is community partnerships. We believe that we're stronger when we come together to deliver high quality opportunities with young people and for young people. And that was evident in this initiative as well. The partnership with the CSJ, with the Getty, Vox and YouthSpark, it follows the philosophy that Vox has always operated under, which is when everybody brings their expertise to the table, that's where the magic happens. Um, hi, my name is Kiana Porsche and I'm the program coordinator at YouthSpark. YouthSpark is a nonprofit organization and we're based on the front lines inside of the Fulton County Juvenile Court. We provide cutting edge services, education and advocacy to combat youth trafficking, exploitation and abuse. We are always excited to partner with Vox because they empower young people to use their creativity to express how they view the world. Here at YouthSpark, we provide youth with the tools and also resources needed to use their voices in all aspects of their lives. I'm Kyron. Um, I'm 19. I'm a photographer that lives on the south side of Atlanta, and I've been involved with Vox ATL for about three years, starting my junior year in high school. And I've served as a editor, a content creator, and a facilitator. My relationship to photography comes from when I was like 
really little, like my, my dad's a photographer, my grandfather's a photographer. And it's just something I kind of like grew up around and like learned to love. My role in this program in pursuit of justice was to mainly, well, for starters, I had to come up with my definition of justice. Um, and so I did, I did a lot of thinking for this entire project, like 50% of it was like thinking. Like as much as I enjoy taking photos, I really do enjoy the thinking process that goes into creating photos and what's like symbolic about it. And just being intentional in how you want things to turn out, but also being able to be flexible and kind of work with what's around you. To give it like a short rundown, we started with the basics like ISO shutter speed and aperture. We are, first off, we're learning photography and kind of how to tell stories through photography and what that means, like what your storytelling style looks like. Um, we will be tackling uh, the idea of like, what does justice mean to us? And so how can we portray that through our stories and through our photos? This is the exposure triangle. And what happens is these three components of ISO shutter speed and aperture come together to make up like the perfect exposure of a photo or the exposure that you are looking for that's right for your photo. Even though this entire curricula was based around taking photos on your cell phone, I thought that it was important for them to know exactly what their phone was doing for them as they took pictures. And then we moved into aspects that they had more control over, like color, lighting, and perspective. And so now instead of like me having to frame uh, the subject, the photo kind of frames itself. I love that because it's like exactly what all the participants are going to be doing this week when you go take photos, experimenting with this concept of rule of thirds or leading lines or symmetry. This is a photo I took at Pride 2018. And um, I think it's a good example of rule of thirds because you have this photo split into three. The objective of what you're shooting does affect how you shoot it. Um, whether you go in close or you take a more observational kind of uh, step back perspective. And our pilot last December 18th from YouthSpark uh, set the president for this series this year. They established some initial ground rules, uh, which are basically the agreements that we all commit to to make sure that everyone feels safe and respected in the space. Now that we've done the go around, uh, we want to go back and touch on some ground rules that previously everyone uh, that's so far that's been here has helped co-create. Um, and what ground rules do for us is they kind of help us set the tone in the space so we know how to interact with one another and how to feel safe in the space. Um, I would like to point out one that I saw um, earlier, uh, the open up one. Um, I'd like to, I think creativity comes from being vulnerable and seeing everyone open up and be okay with being vulnerable in this space would be really good. And it would be lovely to see that translated through your art. Um, so yeah, and I'm really excited to see that using a uh, Padlet, which is like an anonymous uh, digital board to provide input on the series because all of Vox ATO programs are designed with team leadership and participation input. Justice and injustice and what they look like or feel like um, to you. We're doing this because we kind of want to get into like the reasoning and like symbolism behind like parts of our photos. Um, and like, it can also help support our captioning. In the current climate that we all live in, um, because I don't know, it, negative, it negatively impacts women as much as it does men. And I don't think that people uh, think about how things also impact men. The word brutality is on here. And um, it's just such an active form of injustice, right? Like there's so many things on here that are um, systemic, like, mm -hmm. But brutality is this really act, like in your face, active form of injustice. I would go with white men making rules for everyone else to have to follow. GED, that's all I would say. Injustice is your GED. Everybody, school is not made for everybody. Everybody can't graduate. Everybody doesn't have the right, not the right mindset, but everybody can't click on the class that you put them in because everybody learns different. So that's why I'll just say GED. Some, some people can't even make it to school every day, you know? Especially like now, um, 
online. Some people don't have a place to stay or a computer to get in. So now we all getting kicked out of school. But I do agree with Black people in the White House because at a point in time, that was not there. But you see Obama and um, uh, 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 Michelle, they was in there for a good minute. And I, I don't know if there's any other African-Americans working in there currently, but I do agree with that one. And nutritious food and safe housing. We spend a good amount of time in each workshop session community building, which is essential to the creation of authentic work. We worked hard to support the participants in making them feel like the Zoom room was their space. All right, my name is Lee, I'm 19, I use he, they pronouns. And if I, if my mood were the weather, it would be like a, a thunder, the essence of a thunderstorm, but like with no rain. A cold, rainy day. My mood really has been one of those, it has been a cloudy day. I typically, I'm not a really big rain person, but I love it when it rains while it's sunny. That I'm caring, but something that I hope people see in me is that I am also um, sensitive. That I'm reliable. Ambition. I work really, really hard. Vulnerability and solidarity. The left side, um, mean, aggressive, caring, missing action, and like everyone else. Because by, you know, situations in life, it make you turn two different type of ways. You're either still caring or you're not caring or you're still in the mix of really trying to find out who really loves you and who really doesn't just send there to use you. Welcome. Um, this is the kickoff to this workshop series. And um, I'll start by introducing our first activity for the day just to get everybody um, ready for the day, energized, and so we get to know each other. So um, our welcoming activity is a scavenger hunt in which you're going to look for a pen and paper, something fuzzy or squishy and something special for you. So we'll give you about, I'll say um, a minute to go around and look for those things. Is a minute enough time? In this series, we recruited three additional teaching artists who've been involved with Vox. They spoke uh, about different photography technique, techniques and skills, like the use of storytelling, uh, use of color, and portraits without faces. And we got to see examples of their work. I am the guest artist here today. I'm going to share some of my photos that relate a little bit to composition. And hopefully, like, we're going to break down the elements of it. So, you know, hopefully gives us all a good perspective of, like, future work, what skills and ideas we can carry forward. My pathway to photography was just looking around the world and seeing things that I thought were interesting and taking photos of that. The participation section was rather challenging. Uh, some people had jobs and they had different emergencies and there's situations that we'll never truly know the extent of as to why some of them like couldn't uh, participate and come as often as they may have wanted to. Or, you know, we do know that there are some barriers as far as like Wi-Fi, um, being able to log in, um, having their own device to log in. Then we had another participant got signed up and he got sent to the emergency room. Feedback that you're sharing around what you're learning about um, both individual participants and the barriers that they're facing, as well as the gaps in information. Like if, if these young people who signed up through their probation officers or a DFAX caseworker, um, I'm sure signed up with the best of intentions and we just don't know what they're experiencing in their lives that are keeping them from being able to participate. Um, so I guess I'm just saying thank you for the insights. I think that's really important for us. Um, and I think it's really important for our partners at the Center for Sustainable Journalism and the Getty to just know what the realities are of trying to work with court or system involved youth during a pandemic, especially like, I think it would be different if we could bring all those youth together in the Vox office.
There was no live interaction. So this open call to young people who self-identified as wanting to participate, um, it was also named an open call so that it was not a contest. The idea was um, exactly what Kyron was saying. And what we heard from some of the young artists from Unshuttered in our March 13th um, extra workshop with them, which was making art and the sharing of your art accessible to all young people, especially young people of color, or especially young people or people in general whose voices, whose art has been uh, marginalized. Um, so we created this open call so that any young person in Metro Atlanta that wanted to opt in, and it, I think it's an important part of the story to know that the accessibility was paramount. We wanted anybody who opted in and who followed the submissions guidelines to be published. This was a place for anybody who wanted to participate at whatever level, a couple of sessions or just the open call that deliberately took a strength-based approach to uh, celebrating young people's voices, um, showcasing their art um, and digging into the exploration of justice and injustice through their art. So that strengths-based approach is really important. That's not to minimize the truth that through this pursuit of justice storytelling, we also can see the injustices that many young people, many families are living through. Where you hear from Kiana repeatedly in multiple sessions about how they reached out and how they touched base with the caseworkers or probation officers, and the Jamboard showing Lee's facilitation of the conversation around justice and injustice, I think is all part of that story. I'm just so thankful for the several that did regardless of all of their outside situations and that they had the opportunity to come and, uh, and just show up and create with us. To complete this gallery, we created an open call for submissions because we believe that all young people are impacted by the justice system, even if you are not directly involved in it. We shared an open call for submissions and invited teens through Vox ATL's social media and community partners to share their own storytelling photos in pursuit of justice. And what you see here tonight is the result. Because we respect the privacy of the artists involved in the justice system, we are maintaining amenity for all of the artists in this gallery. This is consistent with one of Vox ATL's signature ground rules, the high school musical rule, we are all in this together. So tonight I will be emceeing the written contributions and where they have submitted audio, you'll hear from them directly. So this is our first artist, uh, Magical Raphael. Magical Raphael is a 17 year old person from Atlanta, Georgia, um, whose goal is to cleanse hurt people. She took these photos because they have such a deeper meaning than what you see. Hi, my name is Magical Raphael, a 17 year old photographer and journalist from College Park, Georgia. My purpose in creating this series of photos is to tell my wonderful journey of life but also tie it into the pursuit of justice. I also wanted to let the people know healing and communicating with the universe plays a big part in the Injustice Act to find both peace and justice. To me, justice is the truth to balance out equality and begin to make soothing minds for people instead of chaos. Where in your life do you feed for justice? Believe in divine timing, it's coming. The photos I chose for this project are meant to capture the peace in justice. Also looking at what injustice has created through the year of 2020. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Enjoy. So uh, the caption for this is, there's always that one person who can bring out life or justice in the midst of injustice. Things are not always just black or white. Injustice and justice creates hurt people from robbers to sex offenders and to racism. Nobody comes out of the womb to hurt someone. Life doesn't work like that. Hurt people hurt people, but it only takes one act of kindness to heal it all. 
So many people have gotten or died from COVID and did not have the ability to protect themselves or get better due to the injustice of having, pro of having proper medical insurance and the ability to protect themselves. You always find freedom on the pathway of thinking positive. Look up to the sky. He will always guide in the right direction. Our next artist is the Mysterious Eye. And Mysterious is a 15-year-old African-American woman, and you will hear more about them in their artist statement. The Mysterious Eye. The Mysterious Eye is a young 15-year-old African-American woman. She is a 10th grade student of Fulton County Schools. She is a leader among her peers and an inspiration to others. She put others first and expands her lenses beyond the present time. The mysterious eye does not let her past define her, but constantly smiles through the hurt. To me, justice is being at peace and being able to feel comfortable in your own skin and community. Thank you again. I am the mysterious eye. Gerald TC2. Um, always be a leader. There's always someone watching. Street view. You may not see it clearly, but there's something out there. Bigger. There are bigger and greater things ahead. You have to look beyond the lenses. COVID-19. Practice safely. COVID-19 has had an effect on everybody. We have to be safe. Granny, the little things can bring so much joy. There are a lot of things that make a difference in this world. Portrait, a mask hides the truth. Everyone is going through something. Our next artist is Ida. Ida is a 15 year old that lives in Georgia. To them, justice means speaking up and making change to help make this world a better place. Justice. In order to pursue justice, it is important to know and understand what justice means. We must recognize when something is wrong and we must love our brothers and sisters. As human beings, we must help make this world a better place and be the change we want to see. Sometimes it may seem difficult to gain justice. There are many things that occur in the pursuit of justice, but we must not give up. We must keep on fighting to help make a positive change. Let your voice be heard. Fighting for justice is not always easy. Sometimes there are several things that go beyond, sorry, that go behind gaining justice. Some of them are speaking up and protecting and protesting in this country. We have the freedom of speech and we must speak up and let our voices be heard. Justicia. In the process of gaining justice, it is important to be united as a community, no matter age, gender, ethnicity, or race. We are all human beings and it is important to stand in solidarity with one another. Our next artist is Arez. Arez is a 17 year old that lives in Georgia. To them, justice is the right of individuals to live without being persecuted for something they have no control over. Hi, my name is Aries, and I am an artist and poet from Metro Atlanta. I am also an individual who is tired. I want people to be able to be who they are and do what they love without fear for simply living. The stories that I tell and the art that I create are a reflection of that. To me, justice is the right of individuals to live without the fear of being persecuted for something they either have no control over or something that they love to do when they pose no threat or harm to another human being. I also believe that justice is the unbiased persecution of individuals who violate that right. Through my art, 
I sought to capture the fight of justice and how justice, equity, and equality have not been obtained in America as of yet. Bang. Round after round. Oh, that deafening sound. Blood on the ground like the floor gates had broken down. Whispers linger in the air. How can a person do this? It hardly seems fair. Only to be silenced and shut down by the tyrant. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, pain. Oh, the pain we share. It is too much for one person, for one community to bear. So we march because we can no longer be compliant. Use like an appliance, locked in confinement or of standards and stereotypes, want us to stay within the lines. Well, guess what? We are, we are defiant. We will continue until our bones are weary. We will move relentlessly until we end the cycle that is oh so dreary. Rain. We are sick and we are tired. When will the storm end? When will we finally be able to gaze upon that beautiful rainbow that we have for so long admired? When, we, when will we obtain the beacon of hope and peace? When will all the strife be washed away and make us feel welcomed? Will the fire and violence cease? Will we be able to begin again? This time with our history being taught, will we finally have transparent conversations about all of the lives that we've lost, about the people who have fought? Insane. Can we scroll over to that one a little more? Thank you. Insane. One would think we shouldn't have these problems, right? One would propose that we have moved past all of this, but as we take on, but as we take one step to the, to the light, towards empathy and understanding, we take two steps back toward the ominous abyss of the dark, where all of the demons of society lurk dreadfully. But having been in the darkness for so long, a multitude of underlying issues have been exposed. The systemic institutions that adversely affect us the racism, the misogyny, the intersectionality of them all is one of the most dangerous. We need to, tr to truthfully and respectively address those aspects that endanger us. We need to properly address our pandemic pain. Our next artist is Marie, um, and they're a 16-year-old that lives in Georgia. They chose these pictures because they show life. Cloudy day. A cloudy, lovely day in Midtown Atlanta. Time is the key to the game. At the end of the day, you realize tomorrow is a new beginning for another try. Marta, how far would you go for something you most desire? Origin, Atlanta. Beltline, black and white vibes, Beltline trail. Our next artist is Reclaw, um, and they are a freshman at Boston University, but they're an Atlanta native. Uh, Reclaw chose these photos to show that the pursuit of justice isn't something that can be accomplished without the work of individuals from all walks of life. Hello, this is Reclaw Photo. I'm a 19 year old photojournalist from Atlanta, Georgia, and I chose this set of photos in an effort to show that the pursuit of justice isn't something that can be accomplished without the work of all individuals from all walks of life. This movement must involve the youth, the older generations, and most importantly, a shared longing to change the way in which we define and achieve justice in America. These particular photos and their captions, they allow us to connect and feel with the subjects in the picture on a level that is deep enough to pull at and challenge both our hearts and our minds. I hope these pictures will remind and inspire viewers to pursue justice wholeheartedly and unapologetically until it is a reality for us all. Thank you for your time. A questioning mother. Embraced by her children, a concerned mother holds up what she fears could become the fate of her son in a country that gives impunity to a select few while giving injustice to others. Taking a stand. With fists raised and heads held high, the youth of Atlanta publicly display their support and commitment towards building 
a country that truly yields justice for all. Hear my cry. A young woman yells out in pain as she recalls the events that led to the senseless taking of her brother's life by law enforcement months prior. Fighting on the home front. A veteran stands amongst protesters showing that there's still much work to be done within America in the fight for justice and equity. Our next artist is Jackson Barrett. They're 19 and an aspiring journalist and filmmaker. To Jackson, justice in 2021 is the acknowledgement of ine inequity and correction of systemic oppressions. Jackson Barrett, 17, is an aspiring journalist, photographer, and filmmaker who enjoys writing, making music, and golfing to de-stress from tireless days of editing and researching new topics to report on and challenge their creativity. Jackson believes that all people should be equal, but that it will never happen until those in power recognize their privilege and meaningfully act upon that knowledge. To me, justice in 2021 is the acknowledgement of inequity and correction of systemic oppression. It is uplifting those whose voices have been spoken over for decades, centuries even, and it ensures that they are being heard and protected. Justice is insurance to uphold the values of our society. To quote a founding father of the land we live in, all men are created equally, meaning everyone is entitled to respect and dignity no matter who they are. A just society is proactive. It does not allow its citizens to experience inequity or oppression from its leaders. Confederates gone wild. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> The inauguration of Joe Biden as the 46th president on January 20th, 2021, angered many right-wing extremists. As a result, Confederate sympathizers were spotted walking through the infamous KKK hub, Stone Mountain, Georgia, for weeks afterwards. Hometown life as people of color in Stone Mountain, Georgia. The photographer in her hometown of Stone Mountain, Georgia, with the Stone Mountain Con Confederate memorial carving in the background. Dari is our, is our next um, artist, and they're a 15-year-old that lives in Georgia. To them, justice is the compromise you had to, you had to do to get to the moment of equality. Hi, my name is Dari. I'm 15 years old and the In Pursuit of Justice photos that I submitted were all taken in a different state of mind, I should say, and that's kind of what I want the viewer to also feel. And I think that justice isn't just being equal to everyone. I think it's more so what you did to get to that point of equality. Behind the scenes. I heard that people don't change just the people inside of them do. The hope for you. College Park, Georgia. White memory. Fade. I was here. It was here and here it will stay. All right. Um, so this is me, I'm Kyron. I wanna ask that um, since I'm speaking, do we have to play my bio out loud? Um, no, cool, all right, thanks. So I'm a 19 year old photographer from the South side of Atlanta. Um, and my purpose in creating uh, this specific series of photos is to examine and break down the views of justice from different angles through a staged photo shoot. To me, justice is something that acts of fairness and equity under a certain moral principle. The photos um, that I chose for this project are meant to capture what justice could look like to anyone from bearing moral backgrounds while still recognizing what justice looks like to me in this setting. Flux. Um, this opening photo represents the balance between masculine and feminine energies, the way I feel justice should be represented, um, and that they flow, much like yin and yang, between power sharing and no one has ultimate power over the other. 
patriarchy. The second photo is meant to represent how the world is now and how a lot of people view it, that feminine energies are meant to be submissive to masculine energies. To me, this is a form of injustice. Matriarchy. The third and final photo in this series represents the inverse of the second photo, but still not justice. This photo is representative of a world or system where masculine energies um, are submissive to feminine energies, which I still do not view as being just. Okay, um, so these few photos, um, the piano and the puzzle photos were submitted a little later, um, not a little later, but after a after one of our sessions, one of like our session related activities. Um, and this was showing perspective um, and color in photos from one of our participants. Um, next, next to them on the wall over to your right um, are also photos that were taken uh, like post session like or in between sessions and they were meant to be showing color and light through photos. Um, I think this is something important to show because it kind of shows the process of which they went through and that they were actually learning things uh, and kind of taking the time to figure out what art is to them when they're alone versus when they're also in this space with us. Um, so I think it's really interesting to see the photos that they've captured. My favorite time on this long weeks, in these long weeks of talking about photography, because I never knew I would talk about photography. I thought I would just be the one behind the camera taking, doing all the picture movements, getting my credits. <laughs> it was really everything. Like, because I know our last class you was in, I wasn't really talking to <laughs> much behind the scenes. And like getting to smile to people. One of my favorite moments of this program has probably been it's more than one, but it's always like the beginning sessions because it's kind of like a like a relaxing into getting to know one another uh, parts of the session. So I something I knew to be true, but it was reinforced. <laughs> especially last week and this week. And that is the power of building relationships and building community because to see the two of you opening up these past two weeks and your laughter and your willingness to share your photos and your ideas. And yeah, I'm going to go back with laughter. Um, that's just everything. And it like, I don't care if it's, uh, pursuing justice or taking photos or whatever the topic is, we can't do any of it without having the positive relationships and the connections with each other. So thank you for your trust and your participation in that. The inequity of access um, that many young people in our community are facing um, I don't take for granted that the magic of peer-to-peer -peer influence um, is readily available to everybody. We think that we, you know, can bring the magic of our organization to anybody who wants to opt in. The, the complexity and inequity of access that um, kept some young people from participating in this um, opportunity and that I think perpetuates inequity in our communities. My one big takeaway is that art should not be viewed as something of status or something that you feel like you need to grow to get good at, but more so something that you should grow into as you learn to express yourself. I really hope that everyone that has seen this has taken something useful that you can use whether you're creating art or just going about like your day-to-day -day life. Um, and to remember to just kind of do things with your whole heart uh, and happy creating.